Hello and welcome to part four of the eVPN series. So this will be the last part of the eVPN series. We're going to look at some of the more advanced features of it, the Anycast gateway, the VRF integration, layer three routes overlay. Um, so it's going to get pretty complex pretty quickly. Hang on with it and we'll see if we can finish these things up. So, so far what we've done in uh, in the previous section, was we, we extended layer two. So we extended layer two from this access port to this access port or another one. And all it is, is a layer two tunnel from one port to the other. Uh, what that means is um, uh, we've done it with 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 the actual peering, with a, with a static peering, we've done it with multicast, we've done it with MPBGP, but, uh, but that's all it is, it's layer two uh, extension. And there is a use case, production use case for that layer two extension. And it looks something like this to where you would actually connect a router or a firewall uh, to your to your EVPN fabric. You will configure your default gateways on that router and firewall. And this could be a trunk with a bunch of them, a bunch of sub interfaces on it. Um, and all your VPNs would just go to its default gateway to that router or the firewall. It gives you an obvious uh, drawback to where you have a big bottleneck right on this link right here. Um, so how do you how do you scale from that? How do you make it better? Uh, and that's where where these features come from. They um, what we do here is we actually uh, take this default gateway and instead of having it uh, on a one central point somewhere where it will create a bottleneck, it uh, puts it everywhere. What does that mean? That means uh, when this server talks to his default gateway, by the time that frame reaches that first switch, it has reached its default gateway and it will just take a routing decision from that point on. Same thing from the other servers. Uh, so, and that's that's really nice. So now you have no more bottlenecks in your, in your fabric. But it does create another issue. Uh, and that issue is uh, if you have configured distributed gateway everywhere and then and then and it's making a routing decision from this point on is if you look at the routing table of this switch it's only going to have its own uh locally configured svis uh, subnets in its routing table uh, so what does that mean that means you'll be able to talk to anything within the data center but if you're trying to reach anything outside of the data center, um, then then there is no routes for that in the routing table. So that's where the layer three uh, routes overlay come in. You can actually extend layer three uh, externally advertised routes and, and advertise them over the EVPN uh, from like a, a border leaf, you know, from external BGP or SPF, and you can advertise them everywhere in your EVPN topology. And on top of that, you can actually advertise slash 32 routes that you learned from the MAC addresses uh, on each of your or of your uh, EVPN switches as well. So um, let's go ahead and, and see how that's configured. So unlike what I did last time where I pasted it in real time, I, I kind of want to go through this line by line because it's, it is a little bit more complex than last time. So uh, the first things we're going to do is we're going to configure that Anycast gateway, uh, which is the easier part, easier part of it. Um, the way that you do it, you have, spe you have to specify a MAC address that everybody's going to use for this Unicast gateway for obvious reasons. Uh, you want that MAC to be the same across your fabric uh, for the purposes of mobility. Uh, and then you have this command right here that says, hey, use that, use that Anycast gateway MAC. And then one last thing is you have to say, hey, suppress the ARP from my VNI interface because they're all going to have the same IP address. So they're all going to respond to the same IP, same ARP request. You want to suppress that and that way you don't see any duplicate IP addresses, um, logs, logs in your, in your infrastructure. So that's, that's step one. Uh, step two is that layer three route overlay. So what we have to do is we have to dedicate a VLAN that we're going to use and that think of that VLAN as a as a you know a physical cable you plug into the layer three engine of your EVPN that we're going to use um, you know for that reason. Uh, so that 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 VLAN you configure just like your other VLANs. You have to give it a VN segment. You have to give it an interface. You have to attach it to a VRF. But uh, you don't have to give it an IP. You can do this IP forward command because there's not not nothing's going to talk to the actual IP address of this interface. Uh, and the way that you you pair it with your uh, with your EVPN is inside your NVE interface. 
uh, unlike last time where we, where we specified a multicast group, you say, I want to associate it with the VRF and that's what's going to make it into the layer three uh, EVPN, not layer two EVPN like previously. Uh, then what you do is you configure the rest of your VRF. So again, this is a pretty much an extension to a VRF is what we're creating here. So again, this the same VNI that we gave that VLAN, like I said, think of it as that cable you plug in, you attach that to the VRF, then you create your route distinguisher. And when you do it in an automatic fashion, it's gonna, what it's gonna do is it's gonna use your AS number from BGP and then this VNI ID from, uh, from here to create that uh, route distinguisher. And that's what Auto does for you. And then you say, hey, I want to import my uh, my both families, the EVPN and uh, and regular IP for Unicast, if you want to do that. Um, so, and that's, that's that. And then the very last thing is the BGP part. So you have to, uh, um, what I've done here is I created an actual route map that permits everything. And then you go into that VRF. So again, that VRF that we created, you go into the, the router BGP, you go inside that VRF, you go inside the IPv4 unicast family. And, and this is actually what lets you advertise into uh, the EVPN uh, B, MP BGP. So this, this command right here says, okay, whatever I bring in into this VRF, uh, it's gonna inject it into EVPN. And then you redistribute into it just like you do with any other uh, BGP configuration, which in here I just said uh, redistribute all my connected routes. So now let's look at uh, what it what it looks like on the actual um, topology here in, in the actual live. So I'm just going to show you it's already configured. We're just going to see well what is it going to do. So let's look at the MAC address table first. We see that the MAC addresses are all learned. Um, we see that, uh, again, we see all the other things. So this this MAC address right here uh, that you see at the bottom is that uh, Anycast gateway that we have configured. You, you see it showing up here. We, we see that we see already some peers um, showing up uh, with, with, uh, with the NVE. So that's, that's, our, that's our BGP. Then we're gonna see two different VNIs uh, or uh, two different uh, yeah VNIs on our on our NVE interface. So we, we see our old uh, multicast one, and that that was the layer two, and now you see that layer three one uh, that's connected to the VRF. Um, then if we look at the routing table, we're actually gonna see everything in there. So uh, what uh, what I mean by that is uh, you're gonna see your your slash 32 advertisements from uh, from your neighbors from your neighboring um, EVPN switches and then um, I actually don't have any other networks that I'm injecting here we, we're gonna see it from another switch I'm injecting this 10.10.3.0 network that has nothing to do with EVPN it just only exists locally on the switch 4 so we're gonna see how we can reach it from from other switches so this is an actual simulation of an external network right here uh, if we look at the BGP table, uh, we're going to see that we import in the layer 2 VNIs. We're going to import the layer 3 VNIs. Uh, so again, it, it's all your same BGP kind of uh, logic that goes there that you have to understand BGP. You have to understand what select first, second, third, and so on. Um, then let's look at our switch 5. So if we look at the routing table here, so this is what, what I mean by uh, looking at the external network, so that 10.10.3.0 network that we advertise from switch four shows up as a as an external network to this fabric. We know how to get to it via switch four, and this switch switch five doesn't have any any local interfaces on that. So that's how you would you know that's how you would reach external networks. So that's how all the other external networks would show up on your route table. Um, so that's. That's that. Let's look at some pings. So obviously, just to kind of do a proof of concept, make sure everything's still reachable. This is our first server. So first server from the second server is working. The the second server is working. Um, the uh, if we look at the external network, you know, make sure we can ping that. So that's working again. So that's that's your EVPN. So now we have a layer two VPN. We have a layer three VPN. Uh, we have slash thirty two networks. We have an external networks. It's all working together. 
um, like I said, and that's it. You know, that's the, that's the EVPN in a nutshell. We've, we've done it all. Uh, there's obviously a lot more that you can do with tuning, with redundancy, with BGP, with external routing protocols. Uh, so the sky is the limit. You know, that's that's the one thing about running the EVPN with the excellent is you can, you get to build it yourself. You get to build it to your specifications. Um, so uh, I, I hope you guys enjoy this series. Uh, there's a couple of other things. Um, well, yeah, IO fit, we saved the world, uh, <laughs> so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, where can I get the config? So now that you finished all this, um, you know, you, you want to get a, a, a copy of the configs, copy of this lab. If you go to IOFIT um, uh, LinkedIn page, I'll, I'll make an article there. There you can actually go and download all these configs. So again, make sure you hit, you know, go, go look us up on LinkedIn and it's all going to be right there. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. My next series is going to be some about something else. Uh, so stay tuned and uh, on until next time.